Hello friends, today we are going to take up the topic creativity. In the context of creativity, we will be taking up two lectures. In the first case, we will theorize about creativity, we will look at how it is defined, what do we have to say about creativity. And in the second lecture, we will look at how we can actually use certain tools to encourage creative thinking for a variety of purposes. So, <coughs> we will look at uh, the first thing we will do is uh, find out how creative you are. And um, as I have said with you, although the results uh, are not to be taken very, very seriously, they are rough indicators about certain mindsets that you have about certain ways that you feel about things, about uh, your interactions, uh, your thought processes and interactions. And they would be insightful in, in unlocking certain parts of your mind, as well as learning new habits and unlearning old habits of thought and thinking. Now, <coughs> You see that uh, the way that uh, creativity has been defined always brings an element of something which is new, something which is innovative, something which is different. And uh, we will discuss that in uh, greater detail as we proceed with this talk. We are told that it is the ability to make otherwise bring into existence something new, okay. whether a new solution to problem, a new method, a device a new artistic object or form. So, the element of new in a wide variety of fields which are accepted or considered as significant is what we consider generically as a significant creative contribution. However, there is a larger definition of creativity and a smaller definition of creativity. The larger definition of creativity is creativity that, uh, that have uh, creativity examples of creativity that have uh, made history or have uh, made significant contributions to science and technology, visual arts, music, painting, culture studies, methodologies to knowledge in general. But the smaller aspect of creativity, which of course will be the focus when we do the creative activities, will will deal with creative thoughts of taking up small problems and being creative about it, uh, about them. And we never know at some point of time, we might find that these may lead to still more refined, more, uh, more cogent, more significant creative ideas. <coughs> now, the thing is that um, this is a point I have been trying to make uh, a little earlier as well. As is conventionally understood, you see that uh, uh, artists were, if you are looking at the traditional definition of creativity, considered creative uh, and scientists, because they use rationality, logic, analytical thinking were not creative, considered creative. Now, this kind of a dichotomy did exist until a certain point of time where you see that uh, I would say middle to late 20th century convergences again took place. I would like to point make a point about this. If you are looking at the history of uh, western tradition, because we are very strongly influenced by that, uh, we find that uh, in the renaissance, there was an integration of science and technology with humanities, art, music and so on and so forth. If we take uh, as an example, the case of let us say Da Vinci then we find that Da Vinci was uh, a scientist, he was an, an anatomist, he was also a visual artist, he was also a person who explored optics, the fundamentals of the concept of perspective and so on and so forth. If you are looking at somebody like uh, Michelangelo, we find that he was an architect, a sculptor, a painter, he was also a poet. So, we find the convergence of different uh, qualities creative qualities and the dichotomy between science and uh, art, humanities emerged from that point and then 
radically uh, transformed the way we looked at things. And we had a scientific way of thinking and we had apparently a creative way of thinking, uh, the way that artists thought. Okay. And uh, that hangover continues for a very long time. But today we realize that uh, in different fields, creativity uh, exists and as the definition clearly indicated, we are not differentiating between the fact that this creativity can exist in almost all disciplines. However, what is to be considered creative, let us say in science and what is to be considered creative, let us say in uh, visual art or in music can be very, very different. Who is considered a genius, let us say in the field of science or in music or in painting can be very, very different. So, those differences do exist and we have to respect the fact that different fields, different things are considered as significant and that de determines how we look at the concept of creativity. But whatever the nature, it is to generate new ideas is <coughs> in different fields. A combination of creativity, skills, intelligence, natural abilities. If you are looking at creative geniuses, creativity as we understand something new come on, coming up with a new idea is definitely there. But skills, what degree of skills, memory, imagination combined let us say uh, in the in the draftsmanship of let us say Da Vinci, the lines are absolutely immaculate. So, the craftsmanship is also something which comes in. So, creativity includes creativity is combined with skills, intelligence, ability to analyze things, grasp things and the innate natural abilities biologically driven all these things combined to make creative geniuses. But in ordinary life as I told you a little earlier which is what we are going to focus on in the next part of the talk, we can all generate new interesting creative ideas and that is going to be our focus at a little point of time. However, right now let us quickly look at various kinds of models. You see that if you are looking at uh, European tradition, we find that um, in, his, uh, in the early part of the 20th century exploration start, about the concept of creativity people think about it in a seed start, they start, they start thinking about it in a serious way. And uh, it is divided into four or five categories like you have preparation and uh, <coughs> where you prepare to work on the problem, to focus your mind on this particular problem and explore the problem's dimensions, incubation where it is internalized in the unconscious mind, things are happening, connections are being made, neural networks are being explored, but all this is happening when probably we are not even aware of it. So, it is happening in the unconscious or the subconscious mind. So, incubating is where nothing is visible outside to the surface. Intimation you get a feel that well maybe the solution is there, you have not got it. Illumination is or insight is where you suddenly feel that well you have got the solution. Now, this is a very interesting thing that insight comes suddenly and uh, has to be differentiated from trial and uh, error learning where improvements take place gradually, learning how to cycle, the improvement comes gradually, it does not so happen that you learn cycling in a single day, the learning is very gradual and slow. On the other hand, you are working on a mathematical problem and you have been struggling for many days, the solution comes to you suddenly. Now, this is where you have an insight, because it has nothing to do apparently with the trial and error that was going on, because the solution is very different from what you had been trying to do uh, in the earlier instances. However, what has to be kept in mind is the fact that deep down within your mind some processes were going on and the only difference is that you are now aware of it, earlier you are not aware of it. It is like trying to break a piece of stone or rock by hitting it with a hammer and you find that you keep on hitting it 10, 5 times, 20 times, 30 times, maybe the 31st time there is a crack. That does not mean that uh, the earlier 30 blows did not play a significant role in creating the crack. The thing is that it may only become visible with the 31st one. So, at the surface level it becomes visible. And then verification when you find out whether how realistic, how meaningful the idea is and check it out. Other models uh, exist, <coughs> you have um, the concept of uh, personally meaningful interpretation of experience, actions and insights everyday problem solving and creating expression traits exhibited by people who are professionally or vocationally creative though not necessarily eminent creativity consider given 
uh, great in the given field. So, you see that this brings in these concepts bring in uh, there is are known as little c the second one and big c uh, the third one. These concepts bring in the concept of uh, different approaches to creativity, different ways of looking at creativity as well. Okay. And um, these are important because this further the way uh, the scope of creativity is burden, broadened. Okay. Then you find that another th uh, um, concept, another concept which started making round in the 1960s and 70s became very, very uh, popular with Edward Dubon, D. Bono's work by the concept of convergent as opposed to divergent thinking. Convergent thinking is focused, it is uh, located or centered on a specific area and uh, it is essentially a problem solving kind of a uh, behavior or thing, thinking behavior. Divergent thinking, flexible thinking is where you, flexible thinking is a little different, we will come to that, but divergent thinking is where you are, your thinking is diffused, it is playful, it is trying to make radically um, unreasonable in logical connections between various kinds of things and this playfulness very often can give rise to very interesting and new ideas. In fact, uh, mm, flexible thinking on the other hand is the ability to change your way of thinking, the root of your thinking at a moment's notice that also is relevant for uh, creativity, but is not directly to be equated with divergent thinking. Then you see that you have new moderns. Uh, which uh, explore uh, computational uh, approaches to creativity looking at uh, the way that uh, explicit and implicit processing, the, the way that the brain operates, the brain, the way that brain processes information and how the implicit processing is related to the explicit processing. Uh, there are differences, there are similarities, there are coexistence, there are interchange, there are exchange of ideas. These are what are highlighted in this particular set of theories which are recent, fairly recent theories. So, I am touching upon some of these, you can look up different places on Google to find more information on these, because they might be interesting for you. However, right now I would just also uh, point out that uh, uh, computers or uh, a computer assessment of creativity also is something which is taken into consideration and uh, that is what you found in the earlier slide as well as uh, looking at the brain functions. Uh, for in, or, or in order to understand how creativity takes place. We will come to that in a moment, but uh, here are a few points which are highly debatable areas, we will not touch upon them. If you are interested, you can always explore uh, relevant books and uh, uh, websites and papers and some of these will be given to you in the links and you can explore them on your own. Now, D. Bono, Edward D. Bono, a uh, person who became very popular in this field of creative thinking. Uh, starts by critiquing uh, the conventional ideas about intelligence. Now, I will discuss that a little later in detail. So, the concept of intelligence, IQ, all these things are challenged and uh, the logic that is put forward is that if IQ is good enough, then why is it that uh, many people are not successful or in able to uh, in uh, making a mark or even being able to communicate or show their creativity. The second is uh, Daniel Goldman who popularized the concept of emotional intelligence and which gave rise to co concepts like EQ and all that. Now, this is a concept which again differentiates intelligence from certain other attributes uh, from analytical skills of the mind to other skills of the mind which are equally important. Now, in some of the other lectures we are doing emotional intelligence where the details of it will be discussed but they can be pitted against the concept of creativity as well as intelligence. And at uh, in the 1960s and 70s again a lot of very interesting tests developed and these tests again give us insight as to what is it exactly that people try to explore and analyze under the construct of creativity. Now, plot test where uh, uncommon word association test or uncommon figure association test, remote association test, now all these tests essentially try to explore maybe some of these features that is fluency, the total number of uh, interpretable meaningful relevant ideas generated in response to the stimuli or stimulus. So, how quickly, how effortlessly somebody is able to come up with new ideas, originality, ideas again which we talked about how unusual these ideas are because usual ideas 
or ideas which everybody can generate, unusual ideas can be generated by let us say creative people. Now, some of them might be meaningfully creative and elaborations, elaborations, the amount of details these things have, so that you can actually evolve them into specific, uh, uh, let us say evolve them into specific uh, applications, products or even theories. You are coming up let us say with a theory of let us say intelligences. Now, you just saying that intelligences can be of different kinds is not good enough. If you are able to identify different categories of intelligences and differentiate between them and tell how they operate, then you are able to make a mark the way Gardner does with his uh, diff seven kinds of different intelligences that he proposes. So, he conceptually con you can also do that uh, in developing a product the details of the innovation even with a small product like uh, a drinking uh, bottle where you see that you have various kinds of innovative measures which will see to it that it does not leak, it uh, gives a early warning of breakage, uh, it has a portability, it has compatibility, it has some kind of handle or small details which make it very, very meaningful. Even small products can these can have a lot of creative details. Then you see that uh, visual, auditory, associative in all these cases you see that uh, probably uh, these fluency, originality and elaboration are considered as important and can add to the element of uh, creativity, whether we are talking about tests of creativity or actual application of creativity in large and small uh, cases of everyday life. If uh, looking at the example of let us say cricket, I can think of two, one which relates to googly, where you see that it is definitely a creative idea, because deception is involved. You move your hand in a particular way and the ball moves in, the in a different direction from what is anticipated. So, it was a very creative idea and for instance, the helicopter sort, uh, which again uh, is a fairly recent innovation, uh, uh, has a lot of applicability and uh, efficiency and is a very radically different unclassical and textbook uh, kind of a sort. So, here is also an element of creativity, somebody perfects it, makes it happen and the unusualness and the unpredictability and the skill involved in actually executing it, all these go into making this successful creative products, which other people take up and start making use of. So, you see that uh, right now, if I very quickly go over what we have done so far, we have looked at uh, the definition of creativity, the different models of creativity. We have talked about uh, IQ versus uh, creativity, we talked about some of the important features, which again and again have been taken off for exploration either in the form of tests or whatever. And as I told you a little earlier, computer and creativity, uh, artificial intelligence creativity are being these concepts related or concepts related to this area are being explored in a systematic way. So, we talked about implicit and explicit processing. Another area which is again of a fairly great degree of significance is that a number of initial exploratory studies have also taken place, brain activity during creative behavior. So, you find that uh, obviously, there are difficulties, because you will have to first define what you mean by creative behavior as opposed to non creative behavior. But even so, even with the problematization of definition, if you do manage to have a working definition, then you have found you use you, we have initial explorations do indicate that brain activities also are different for creative contexts as well as creative people. So, you find that uh, certain parts of the cortex okay, and uh, the frontal lobe especially is where the activities of a special kind take place Two unconnected apparently, which are not supposed to be linked together in that kind of activity are activated during some of the creative processes and certain neurotransmitters are generated within the brain, uh, which generally for other kinds of people or for other kinds of thought processes are not generated. So, this is just an insight, just a fragment of a huge amount of research which is going on in the field. In fact, there are quite a number of interesting books I have come across, which talk about uh, uh, I mean brain activities of various kinds that get linked to creativity and maybe I will share with you one or two papers in those areas. Another interesting aspect with which we began was the historical definition of creativity in the western context. By talking about western context, we obviously uh, make ourselves aware of the fact that there are other contexts as well. Even with the within the 
apparent blanket term of western concepts there can be uh, let us say different distinctions in terms of specific countries which define creativity in different ways. So, to begin with if we ask this question I do not really know in the discussion forum probably we will try to explore it together. Do we traditionally have a concept of creativity in our tradition? We have the concept of a genius in our tradition at some point of time when people were exploring the concept of visual arts uh, and especially uh, literary arts the concept of a genius and uh, the uh, quality of a genius which was known as Pratibha was explored in the ancient Sanskrit tradition. But uh, and probably that is the only thing uh, that we have in the context of something which can be related to the element of creativity. But interestingly this concept of Pratibha was emphasized or focused especially in the context of literary arts although the concept can be extended to other art forms. But interestingly as I told you it was not extended to the other kinds of uh, activities like uh, darsana uh, other kinds of analytical activities like uh, exploring uh, let us say astronomy, astrology and things like that uh, in which cases it was generically not uh, explored in a systematic way. But probably this is the Indian concept of uh, a poetic genius or a genius of any kind and it would be interesting to explore what are the qualities that are identified there. Maybe what I will do is do a quick uh, definition working definition of this uh, jot down points and share it in a discussion forum. So, that we can have some interesting uh, I explorations of what creativity meant in the Indian context. But we can also have another interesting concept of what creativity means today in the Indian context. Okay. So, that again through the discussion forum in different cultures we can get to have insights into what creativity means and we will put it up in the discussion forum. Now, you see that uh, many western traditions are individual centric the focus is on the I on the self and in such cases you find that uh, there is a tendency to define creativity in terms of individualism. However, uh, in the eastern tradition there is collective uh, where there are collective cultures uh, for instance in case of China even in case of uh, traditional India creativity is very often explored number one within a tradition and um, number two within a collective or a collaborative work. In fact, there is another book which uh, uh, part of which I will share with you and some of the basic ideas I will share with you. I am not done that in this lecture, but in the slides I will incorporate the name of the book that uh, collaborative uh, creativity, uh, creativity as a collaborative act. Uh, creativity as a diffused act diffused amongst a group of people. Creativity which is generated by let us say a tradition is something which can be has has started been being explored and it can have significant implications in the context of let us say technology. Because uh, much of technological creativity is collaborative currently much of the codes that are written are very very creative, but they are collaborative work. And uh, you see that uh, uh, Although crowdsourcing is a different issue altogether, I will talk about it when we discuss where certain other things and I have already discussed it in the context of social media. Uh, we find that there are certain other examples where uh, uh, you see that collective creativity does exist as for example, in artisan communities. Let us say that if you are looking at uh, a tradition of Bengali Patta painting or Odia Patta painting, uh, we find that the craftsmen uh, learn from one another, the basic techniques are learned from one another. But you find that within that certain flexibilities, certain variations are encouraged, certain new themes are encouraged and uh, there is a collective cur uh, creativity one learns from the other transmits it with his or her distinctive originality. And so, you see that there is collaboration and there is individualization. So, both the things uh, uh, you might say prosper simultaneously. So, some of these artisans express themselves as saying that well we have to learn and we have to work within the tradition. We are doing things collaboratively, but within that my individualization is something which gets expressed. So, that is another collective uh, exploration of the concept of creativity. In certain other areas uh, like for instance, in China the social impact of the work is considered as significant. Certain other places there is probably uh, no word for to equivalent to creativity. And, uh, some places creativity is all about 
the ability of coping with life, others may focus on just one aspect of creativ like creativity like divergent thinking or problem solving and so on. So, this again is interesting that uh, we need to be aware of the fact that creativity is a concept with a relative set of definitions depending on which particular category of people are using it. Still difficult to define, so I will just bring in these problems intellect, intuition, conscious, unconscious, order, disorder, conventional, unconventional, left brain, right brain, originality, uniqueness, difference. Now, you see that uh, you find that uh, lot of things go into this debate, okay, which is creative, which is not creative. And uh, in certain cases, uh, you will find that not all the attributes can be very clearly articulated. Somebody might uh, even challenge the notion that uh, somebody might say that disorder is creative because it leads to uh, divergent thinking. But some of the others may say that uh, no order is very significant in the context of creativity as well. Conventional as well as unconventional within a tradition you can have creativity uh, diffused within a community. So, in that case it is conventional in certain ways. So, you have a wide range of definitions of creativity and uh, wide range of uh, uh, debates as well about what is creative, what is not creative and how to define it. Uh, this is just to make you aware of the fact that such problematics, sub, such problems, such issues do exist, but in spite of that we come back after all this discussion to the three points, it is the concept of originality, something which is different, unique and uh, remarkably uh, changing. Uh, a, a remarkably transformative, so that uh, the entire perception of things change. Now, these are the qualities which again and again get reiterated in many of the traditions. So, for a working definition people today use that. And the next point is that if you are talking about all these things, how are they re relevant in the context of soft skills? They are relevant in the context of soft skills, because you see that one of the fundamental issues which comes up is generating new ideas developing new technologies, coming up with new solutions, uh, strategies and so on and so forth in various walks of life when you are working. And much of these require creativity skills and hence after quickly going through some of the theoretical aspects of uh, creativity, we would need to do certain activities and creativity. However, before we go on to do anything creative, I would like to make a point which is that it is very important to develop a mind which is willing to accept changes. Unlearning things that you have learnt is very, very important. You might be intelligent, but if you are arrogant, then you can never be creative. Arrogance and intelligence when they are together can be very, very bad. And uh, I would just like to touch upon the points that are made by uh, uh, Edward de Bono uh, about this particular thing artistic versus scientific, how they are different, they are just indicated here. Problem solving and other th things which uh, I have already discussed indirectly are there in the slides and you will get to know about them. So, we will talk about it when you when you see the slides, you will get some insights. So, we will skip that for the timing, time being limited for us. What we are looking at right now is why is it that intelligence is not enough and although De Bono is controversial in the academic field and people uh, challenge some of the theories that he has developed and identify that many of them work only for certain kinds of thinking and may not directly relate to the concept of intelligence. Nonetheless, I have a feeling that uh, probably there is a lot of home truth, if not academically verified truth in what he says about intelligence and these can be uh, stepping stones, the points that he makes can be stepping stones to start off in the direction of being creative with new generation of new ideas, strategies and so forth. So, you see that uh, the way we developed uh, the concept of intelligence, uh, we carry it with it a, a kind of a meaning load which tells us that if somebody is intelligent then probably uh, or bright, then probably he should be more creative, he should be more effective and so on and so forth. This very often does not happen, because you see that as Goldman has uh, convincingly pointed out and you have gone through the talk on emotional intelligence, 
creativity uh, 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 intelligence is not enough uh, to be socially successful uh, or even for that matter successful in your life because you might have intelligence but you may not bring it to uh, uh, take into consideration hard work and other things which are required with that and you see that uh, mental ability is not in itself good enough you have iq tests which test your ability mental abilities but well uh, do they test your perception do they test your focus now you see that uh, other than uh, abilities you need to also have a uh, build these qualities qualities of perception qualities of focus and so on and so forth so intelligence is a kind of a potential it is something which is given which is there but it has to be utilized if you remember earlier i talked about perception and attention in the perceptual field you can feel the presence of everything but it is only what you attend to is what you register in a similar way there is this energy of it intelligence all around but only when it is applied in a meaningful way can it actually be successful it's like the difference uh, between having a very powerful car and a poor driver as de bono suggests and a moderately good car and a very very careful and competent driver now the possibility is that uh, although apparently for a very short period of time the more powerful car might show success it might crash and that might be the end of the story whereas a more careful driver will succeed in channelizing the energies of the brain even the if the energies and resources are limited in a more meaningful and constructive way so intelligence uh, combines a lot of qualities like ego ability to defend cogently so you have an ego uh, which you have to unlearn very often accept that uh, somebody else might have points which are meaningful because if you don't think that way what you will do is you will argue if the other person may not be as intelligent as you are but he might be telling the correct thing on the other hand you argue and because you are more intelligent you are convincing so you see that uh, your points are taken into consideration you win but because you see that you haven't given the others perspective a chance you have lost because probably the others perspective was more meaningful and if you had said your ego okay and given up your ability to defend cogently then you would have gained an opportunity rather than losing an opportunity to learn and explore similarly overconfidence can be a killer because that does not permit you to explore analysis uh, you is very very important argument is something which is to be avoided and attack you see that uh, you have some of these skills analysis uh, analytical skill is something which uh, an intelligent person has so he can again argue very competently so the point but if he analyzes in a more constructive way his own stand as well as the other person stand then he would probably come to a better solution so you see that it is very easy for an intelligent person to prove that the other person is wrong because he, he has that ability to do that but uh, is that good enough is that the right approach so before we start learning about creativity the arrogance of intelligence is something which has to be said patterns and new patterns you see that the we we live in a world where the brain tends to make heuristic decisions i think i have made this point earlier also we need shortcuts so we create certain paths which are strengthened we create certain schemes which are strengthened and we work within those frameworks so the moment a problem comes we quickly move in that direction to solve it but you see that uh, that stops further exploration again taking de bono's analogy if you are driving by the main road throughout your life you keep on doing that and probably you miss out on whatever is there in the side roads until maybe your car breaks down you walk through the other roads and discover something very interesting exciting new so you are able to make new connections you are able to see new things you are able to have new experiences which you can relate maybe next time you take your friend along those paths so exploring the bypaths is something which patterns inhibit so if you work according to patterns then you do not explore the bypaths the various uh, uh, tools that we'll be using in the next uh, lecture will try to break these uh, bypaths most creative ideas look logical when they have been actually uh, learned or which when they have actually been applied 
but initially they look illogical. So, that is one of the things we have to keep in mind. So, that uh, when you come up with new ideas apparently they might look illogical. So, and uh, later on when you look at it they look very very logical. Two examples uh, one is uh, the shift from large computers huge computers which occupied uh, university buildings and were very less powerful to the contemporary PC as well as the mobile phones. So, somebody had to take a step you see that the moment uh, somebody innovatively thought of uh, computers at home okay, then you had uh, a situation where uh, computers became a byword in every house. Okay. So, this is another issue that needs to be kept in mind. So, also with the concept of vaccination which you see that uh, or inoculation where you are bringing in the germs in a milder form are injecting them into the body. So, it apparently the idea looked ridiculous at right at the beginning. So, these are important issues that uh, uh, give us insight to the fact that when some very radical interesting ideas emerge they look ridiculous, but afterwards they seem very very logical because you are able to link the pieces together. So, this is something which has to be kept in mind that when you are making uh, dynamic explorations uh, creative explorations apparently things which seem logical which very often is linked to the concept of intelligence may have to be said you might have to abandon them and these are some of the techniques again which we will discuss in the next section. So, you see that uh, new ways of thinking new ways of teaching uh, you have the example of De Bono which I am referring to uh, Saugata Mitra who talked about uh, certain very interesting concepts I will not deal with them you google and find out the concept of the hole in the wall where you see that uh, uh, in the uh, TED talk he points out that uh, you see that uh, we live in a world where learning to a very great extent does not need instructors from outside. Teachers do not need to teach us because the information is floating the key to learning is self motivation and an urgency to do something. When both these things are combined then you are able to learn very effectively very very meaningfully. So, what he tries to convincingly communicate to us and manages to succeed to a certain extent he succeeds to a certain extent is the fact uh, that uh, learning is something for which teachers are not really required. Inspiration is required support is required and uh, what is very important is to provide information and allow for exploration. So, you see that um, uh, arguments search for truth logic now these were some of the things which have come down to us uh, in the western tradition. Okay. Uh, if you are looking at uh, let us say Aristotle um, uh, Socrates argumentation all the time Plato talked about uh, the search for truth Aristotle talked about logic and you see that these traditions have come down to us and after that you see that with the advent of colonization and all that especially in the Indian context the logic of fear of discipline these things have come down to us. Now, how conducive are they to exploring new ideas to creativity which is very deeply linked with learning is another issue that we need to have in mind. So, the point is that many of these lead to what is known as convergent thinking. So, are they good enough for all situations or do we need to think in other ways. So, you see that uh, perception versus logic okay. and uh, what you I would like to quickly share with you is that uh, David uh, Perkins uh, article very popularly points out that most of the mistakes are that we make are not logical mistakes, but mistakes of perception. Okay. We have cognitive biases where we for instance uh, the bandwagon effect everybody is doing it let me do it. So, you see that the perception of something the fact I am just giving an example there are 1000 other examples and there must be at least 50 to 60 different cognitive biases if you search them up in the Wikipedia and these are of various kinds and these are all about errors in our thing, thought processes because of various kinds of flaws some of them are because the brain wants to find a quick shortcut solution some of it is because our perception as has been indicated here uh, are wrong uh, we have misperception. For instance uh, uh, literature uh, research tells us that 
most witnesses can give very contradictory or very very uh, let us say unpredictable and undependable account of what they have seen. Because you see that much of the perception as we have discussed earlier comes from our own minds. So, you see that if you motivate them in a particular way they would come up with various different discrepant uh, uh, let us say uh, descriptions of what they saw. Okay. And uh, when it comes to biases of the mind many of them are perceptual biases. When we talked of illusions, illusions are where perceptual biases. When we are talking about propaganda, when we are talking about brainwashing these are perceptual biases. Okay. When we are talking about persuasion for that, that for persuasion as, as a concept itself as we have done that is also perceptual biases. And as I told you bandwagon effect is where I find that 10 of my friends are doing a particular thing without giving it a thought I say that probably this is the safest thing because everybody do is doing it probably it is the correct thing to do because the mind is lazy. So, changing perception is not a matter of intelligence, but willingness. If you are intelligent you generally do not change perception. In fact, in cases if you have the arrogance of intelligence changing perception is very difficult. On the other hand if you have the willingness to accept to say that although I am probably very intelligent I still have a lot to learn. I am capable of being wrong and I need to learn and wherever required I can think in a different way and I learn whatever I have learnt earlier. Now, if you do these things probably the step the, these these mental activities or atti attitudes are the stepping stone to becoming more and more creative in the future. Okay. So, the arrogance of intelligence is something which has to be taken care of by all of us. So, the difference between design and analysis focuses on design rather than on analysis in the context of uh, let us say uh, creativity not focus on intelligence and truth, but possibilities and relevances. And uh, with this I hope that uh, you have kind of prepared yourselves for taking the next step where you will ignore the uh, misgivings of your mind. You will be more cautious of the fact that you are not arrogant, you are more open to new ideas, you do not block your mind and although you are intelligent uh, you do not underestimate people who are less intelligent, but may have certain points which make sense and move in the direction of becoming uh, coming up with more creative ideas. Because in a small way we can all be definitely more creative than we are right now, if we try to think and explore things in a slightly different way. Thank you.